Uh, welcome to our Umbraco case study webinar series, where we invite a partner for a deep dive into one of their case studies. My name is Arnold Fischer, Umbraco advocate and partner manager for the Benelux Markets. So creating a new digital platform for multiple services and multiple divisions can be quite challenging. And the journey to build is definitely an interesting one to take a look at. In this webinar, leading management consultancy firm Behrenschot, together with their agency 4NG, will take you on their journey to building that platform from scratch. I would like to welcome Paul De Metter, digital strategist at 4NG, and Laura De Vaan, marketing manager at Behrenschot, to tell us about this project. So um, welcome, Paul. Happy to have you. Uh, please uh, introduce yourself and uh, take it from there. OK. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll start with this slide then. Meet the speakers. My name is Paul De Metter. Uh, I'm a managing partner in digital strategies within 4NG, which is a full service uh, digital agency. We've been uh, working with Umbraco since 2005, but I will introduce a little bit of the company uh, later. Um, I'm a big uh, Umbraco fan uh, myself. We've worked with the tool for many years, and I think uh, we have Beresholt uh, as, a, as a partner in this, which had a great case, uh, which will be represented by Laura de Vaan. So maybe a short introduction on you, Laura. Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Laura de Vaan. I'm marketing manager at Beresholt, responsible for uh, marketing and communications uh, department. And Rest I will tell later, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's take it away then. We'll do first yeah. do some introductions on Beerschot and 4 g and then dive into the case. So can you tell me a little bit more about Beerschot and what they do and how they are organized? Yes. Uh, yes, we are a management consulting uh, firm uh, with 400 experts in uh, the Benelux, so also in Belgium. And uh, uh, with all these experts, we have a lot of know knowledge in our company and, um, and therefore we also focus on thought leadership. Um, we provide consultancy and we also support the implementation of the consultancy. Uh, and besides advice, we also offer digital solutions, uh, which is quite new, uh, new and which also affects uh, the website. Um, and you can think of uh, benchmarks, for example, or online assessments. Um, well, and as if for my team and for marketing communication, we have our main four goals are uh, our brand reputation, of course, very important, uh, lead generation and direct sales of the solutions, uh, soft conversion with thought leadership content. So, for example, uh, gated content su such as white papers and um, yeah, everything to get uh, newsletter subscribers. Uh, and last but not least, attracting new employees, which yeah. Uh, yeah, we are a company with uh, the people uh, who make the company. So our employees and, and having enough employee, employees is very important. Yeah, oh. and when you say management consulting firm, it's or a consultancy firm, it's usually about reports and, and lots of papers. But that's not the case with you at Beerschot, right? Because there are very many roles within the organization that are quite tech-based. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, different. There are so of course there's still uh, reports and papers, <laughs> but we also um, uh, are more and more into digitalization. So also uh, questions to make uh, client portals, um, uh, yeah, and, and dashboarding, um, Power BI stuff like that. So it's really um, yeah, we are a very broad company with uh, many different uh, disciplines and. Yeah. and very different uh, consultants, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Now we'll take a little bit on 4NG. Um, I'll take it uh, slow in this one because uh, you see a lot of logos here, but basically we're a buy and build platform with 4NG uh, consisting of multiple labels, which are uh, listed below. Last week, we added Bickle Heart, and basically each label has its own specialization. So we build our specializations broadly. We work with 240 experts on four locations, and we also have access to about 500 freelancers. Um, with this case, we also uh, work from, uh, from our Umbraco departments, which has specialized um, people on that. 
we've been a gold partner since 2007. So we're one of the first gold partners from the Netherlands who actually went to Denmark to get the first trainings. It was fun. It was a totally different company, but still both have their, uh, their good things. Uh, we do both content and commerce clouds because Embraco is so much more than just a CMS. I think the term GXP was coined in the, in the New Year's reception, and I think that's the future as well. We don't look at Embraco as just content management. We do different things with it. We also use it as a platform to build on. We feature uh, MVP, uh, Lena Fontaine, who's uh, probably known from Duch uh, as a presenter. We do a lot of accelerated things, so we've built a lot on this. But I think the most important thing of this webinar is not for ng but especially Beerschot, because we did a great case with them. Uh, and I think in this webinar, we are really looking forward towards uh, seeing the challenges and the focus areas which we had during the project, not only from our side, but as well, especially from the Beerschot side, because it can be quite challenging to do a digital project uh, as a customer as well. It's not anymore that you just say, okay, we give it to a full service agency and everything is done automatically. You, you're really looking at the partnership. From that, we go into wins and learnings and the future perspective. So, um, Laura, it's, uh, I, I really want to, to give you the stage on this because I think the, the, the challenge and the roadmap you, you built with this on Beershot was, was pretty good. And creating a digital platform can be quite challenging. Uh, can you uh, elaborate a little bit more on the challenges you found at, at the beginning and the start of the project and all? Yes, of course. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was quite a multiple uh, challenge, uh, to be honest. Um, uh, one of the things is that we have, uh, yeah, what, what I said, it's quite a complex uh, company with the multiple services and multiple divisions. Oh, yeah. Um, so that was simply already a challenge in how you present that on the website and people can find the, the correct information. Uh, so in, in UX wise, uh, how to make things clear, it was already uh, difficult. We already knew that from our old website. Um, and then um, we, we had a combination of an, uh, our old CMS, which was a closed uh, system. Uh, and, and also a bit uh, in the old technique. So we wanted to change on that side. And we had um, a new uh, brand identity um, because we saw in uh, our image uh, research <coughs> that um, uh, we had to yeah, be more um, clear in our image. It was quite positive, but it was a bit um, yeah, mixed. So uh, we wanted to give um, a more clear image uh, on the website. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was the combination to, to choose to, to uh, make a new corporate website. And at the same moment, we also saw some other needs uh, out of the, the company. Um, so we started with digital solutions, which also asked for um, a website with an e-commerce um, uh, yeah, functionality. Uh, we wanted to, to start with say, yeah, direct uh, purchase uh, through the website. And we also uh, have our digital services section in the firm. And uh, these consultants want, wanted to put up, um, to set up client portals with that within a short time. Um, so this all came together in the same time. Uh, we started with a corporate website. And in the end, it were um, yeah, three different uh, Umbraco um, uh, yeah, websites, which yeah. uh, combine all these. So that's really uh, good. Yeah. So because of the needs within the organizations, you really already had to start with a roadmap to start with. Yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, it was uh, much more uh, complicated than uh, the, the corporate website in itself was already complicated, but it became more uh, complicated with the different needs. Yeah. yeah but you had already had a clear vision from the start where you wanted to end up uh, at the end of the roadmap. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and especially, I think, especially for the corporate websites, the other uh, two projects were a bit more um, uh, to, to design during the process. But uh, for the corporate website, we knew quite well what what went, uh, what we were satisfied satisfied with in the old website and what was yeah. uh, what needs to be changed. Yeah. So basically, let's look to that corporate website, what we're talking about, because it wasn't just a simple website. It was quite big in number of pages and, and modules yeah. 
Uh, so uh, you had to focus on some areas to to change them. Um, so yeah. can you take us away in the, the key focus areas you looked at during the development? Yeah. Um, yeah, what I uh, told previously already that um, we one of the main focuses said to, to uh, um, show the services we have and to make people convert uh, um, yeah, into a lead. Uh, so you want to show the services and you, what you, we also wanted to uh, prove that, uh, to give more proof with cases in the new website. Uh, so that was an important, uh, important aspect. Uh, and also the, the selling of the, the digital solutions. Uh, the second thing is that, um, uh, is the labor market eh, to tell people uh, how, uh, how nice a company we are to work at. Um, and then the really important part was the, the insight. So we have a lot of thought leadership content. Um, yeah, you see already here it's over 220 insights. It was at the moment of the migration, but uh, now we already have much more. Um, so it was quite, um, uh, how do you see it? A, 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 a big job to, uh, to see what do you want to um, migrate and what do you want to um, uh, yeah, make new content for. And yeah. uh, totally, it was more than a thousand pages uh, we had to build in the new website. So, yeah. uh, Can you tell us a little bit on a thousand pages? It's like enormous, but especially from a content perspective, how did you manage that transition? Um, yeah, it, um, I think first step is um, that we had to um, define what kind of content, eh, what I just told, what type of content do you ha have and what templates do you need? Um, and that was really a um, good thing of working with Embraco, that uh, there was a lot of flexibility, but also and eh, we have all the flexibility to make our own pages, but we also have uh, the option to make templates with the components we have. So for the different type of insights, for example, like a webinar page or um, a news page, we have a template which we can use. Um, so we started quite early in the process, which components do we need for the different pages uh, and, and to test with the template. Uh, and I think we started with the content at the moment that we also start with uh, the whole uh, discovery uh, uh, part of the website. So it was really um, um, sim uh, at the same time, the content development and the website development. Yeah, because Umbraco can be set up totally in blocks, of course, and it can go every way. But actually, you're saying like that having uh, the templates also helped in giving you structure. So yeah. there has to be some intermediate of, of both to get this amount of pages done, especially with new people uh, or old people working on a new platform. Yeah, we worked with a team of, uh, I think, eight people <laughs> to migrate uh, the content. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, but we also, it, and it really worked well that we had templates for, for news, for, for all the, the um, standard pages. So mm -hmm. you can, we also had one freelancer working with us with the migration. Uh, but on the other hand, we had uh, um, also more freedom um, as I compared to the old CMS. So the, um, uh, the working at Bereschop uh, pages, we really built and composed uh, ourselves with the components uh, we made. Okay. So that really the, the combination of flexibility and, um, and templates worked well. And also that we um, experimented already during the process. So we could, uh, during the spins, we could give feedback. For, so this works, this doesn't work. We need uh, this component extra. Yeah. yeah. And I can imagine uh, many of the participants here, people who view this later on, does visit the Beerschot uh, website daily. So we have a short video on the end result. Yeah. So this was the end yeah. result. You were you see, uh, yeah. here you see the homepage with the slider with video, which I really like. It's quite new in the consultancy market. And uh, on the homepage, you see all different kinds of insights um, and also the cases. And um, well, here you see the example of the, the insights uh, library. So you can search on all the different insights on the teams uh, which are um, relevant for you as a visitor of the website. 
And this is one of the templates for a blog in this uh, example. Well, it goes quite quick, but uh, gives a bit of an idea of how the website works. Yeah, and you look, use a lot of content from the people who work at Beerschot as well. Yeah, so, yeah. Our yeah. experts are uh, really central in the website. So uh, they also, um, we all, always work with them with making the content. So we also show uh, who, who has written the content and who has written the blogs because these are the experts you also uh, want to work with as a client. Yeah. And also all the experts have a uh, profile on the website too. Okay, thank you. I find it very interesting to, to see the real people and uh, not just another report. So I think that's a great piece of branding. But yeah, and it really works. We see that people go from the services, then they click through to the advisor, and uh, sometimes they contact them directly or they uh, by phone or by email. So uh, people are really uh, like to read which are these experts. Yeah, yeah it's not like a big, huge Ooh. consulting firm with no uh, faces behind it. So that's something <laughs> I, I really find find very pleasant from the from the end result. Um, of course you had a, a, a quite a project with internal stakeholders with uh, new technology with partners uh, there's no way this all can go like flawless so we're also looking into the wins and the learnings from this project so if we look at the wins first so what did it deliver in the end results towards beer Schot, what you didn't have before yeah um well, I think that one of the main results is that uh, the website, the usability increased uh, very much um, for the clients. So, uh, yeah, to, to find the right information on the website. Um, uh, also, the overview of our insights, uh, the, the, um, uh, the, that you can, there's one place to find our, all our knowledge. And on the other hand, we can use all these knowledge on the other pages with uh, content pickers. Um, and uh, of course, also for the clients to direct purchase. So, so uh, if you want to buy an online assessment, you can buy directly. Um, then empowering our employees, which uh, I already said a bit, I think that um, yeah, the content management is, is easy for them. Um, so we see also, we also always work with, with new people in the team, uh, for example, with a traineeship, and we see that they easily get used to working uh, with Embraco. So that's, yeah, also because we, at daily base, we publish new articles. So it's important that they are quickly um, trained, but also they can, they can uh, easily work with it, with uh, Umbraco. Um, yeah, also lower costs. As I said, we had a closed source um, a license before. So um, yeah, that's also, uh, and, and also because we can do quite a lot of things from our, from ourselves and um yeah, that's also um, connects to drop in time market. So we can do a lot of things for ourselves. And if we and if we can't do it ourselves, we can uh, easily um, uh, yeah search for help uh, at 4NG. And uh, so most of the times, it's not really difficult to change things. Is my um, yeah experience. So that's yeah, it's much easier for us to uh, to change things and to test and try uh, things uh, in yeah in a Quick, uh, quick way, um, and uh, yeah, what I said are uh, the the different three different type of functionality. So corporate website, e-commerce, and client portal in one platform. Yeah. And so before we had different divisions with different CMSs, and sometimes I didn't even know that it exists. <laughs> and now uh, we have everything together in one CMS and one uh, agency. So that's much better. Yeah, and actually, it's uh, it's like three Umbraco instances working together, which also yeah. gives you some options on on releasing different parts uh, across the system. But like the dramatical dropping time to markets, uh, it, it, like numbers, I know you first had to go to a website builder, build a website, set it up. Took you about six weeks, if I'm correct. How much time does it take nowadays? Oh, that's difficult for me to say because I don't do that myself. <laughs> okay. But no, I know from art that it takes like one to two days. So uh, yeah, if I, I yeah, if I, how I know in Braco, I think maybe in about a few few days, something like that. So um, yeah. But basically, what you're saying as well is that you first went to okay, being 
uh, reliant on a partner, now you can do it yourself uh, yeah. and have the speed within your organization. You do it for your clients so you can uh, leverage the technology for your clients. So yeah. that's, that's yeah. a great win. But when we look at learnings, what are the things that you can take away for any of the viewers of this webinar that you say, okay, this is something I wanted to know before the project. <laughs> um, yeah, as I already said a bit, uh, if you have such a big content migration, don't underestimate. <laughs> and I, I already knew that it would be complicated. Um, um, but in the end, it's really good to start in an early phase. Um, um, yeah, I think that we we did that, and in the end, um, there's still some piece of content that we could, couldn't check during the process. So it's it's better to do that uh, really in time in the progress. Um, so editing content in the CMS during the sprints, uh, during the testing, so you can give direct feedback. And the feedback is always diff different with uh, the designs look really nice. <laughs> but if you start with the content, you see what works and what uh, doesn't work. Yeah, so so that's, basically get your feet into the clay and... Yeah. So, and and yeah, it, it feels a bit strange because you think, well, we, we have to know the exact template before we start making content. But um, changing the content a bit is, is more easy than uh, than changing the yeah or, or having templates who doesn't who, yeah or components who don't uh, work very well. So yeah, it's really important. Um, and also what we did and what really worked well in the end because we also saw it was so much work and we didn't have enough progress. Uh, it's that um, it was in the month of December, so it was a good month to do that. But we made really a content stop. So we said, well, we really stop with the old website now. We don't put any new content on it, except for if there was a major news article, something like that. And uh, the whole team uh, focused on migrating uh, the content. So also the internal team started with uh, a Scrum uh, uh, yeah, way of working. And um, yeah, we really had to put all our effort into to make it work. And all and it's not always, not only the text, but you need new images. Uh, there's so much effort um, you have to put in with the whole team. Yeah, yeah. so focus. Focus, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. and um, the direct communication between the different disciplines and expertise is, ex is essential. I really um, uh, think it's, it worked really well, well that we had direct communication between uh, yeah, me as a business owner uh, but also UX design development. Um, uh, I didn't um, thought of before how well that could work and we, how closely we would work together in the Scrum team. So um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. And you, you have to make time for that, of course. <laughs> so also that yeah, on a daily basis, you can uh, react uh, on the questions through Slack, but also for the dailies. But that uh, is really, um, um, yeah, it, it speeds up the um, the development, I think, yeah. yeah. You really need to dedicate yourself to this project to, to do it well. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Okay. And I also experienced that in the later sprints we did, we did and you you don't have to, yeah, I was all, almost fully dedicated during this process and with another project that's uh, getting more difficult and you, yeah, then you see you don't have enough time for testing, yeah. Yeah, okay, great. Um, and also the, digit, the different disciplines within the country to, um, uh, yeah, for example, the IT uh, department uh, for the hosting, for all the other uh, connections with our Azure system. Uh, it's really important to, uh, to connect them in an early stage. And it's, it's quite hard if you're in the middle of uh, the process to, to think about these stakeholders. So that was hard sometimes, but we did a, a kickoff, a technical kickoff in the beginning. Uh, with IT and, and that's already a, a, at least a good kickoff and they know that things are going to uh, to start and to go are going to unroll um, but also like the back office you yeah, have really practical but where do the leads go through and um, these people get another yeah another have to get used to a new, another way of uh, how the leads uh, get to them so uh, and that's something I forgot a bit in the process <laughs> so uh, yeah, and also to to get the rest of the um, the organization to um, to keep them updated about the process. 
Yeah, yeah. you are already saying that's like the, the last one you did adjust Scrum, so that means making choices. Yeah. You really yeah. needed to prioritize and. Uh, yeah, the must haves and the uh, nice to haves. And uh, yeah, that, uh, in the end, uh, the during the processing, that's getting more and more important because you have to make choices so to stay within the scope. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much for being so open on this. And where is it heading now? Um, yeah, um, and what I already told a bit, uh, we uh, we um, stated like an MP MVP for the the web, uh, the e-commerce e functionality. So we um, we are uh, broadening that now uh, with a really web shop experience, so people can buy di with direct payment uh, and also with invoice, uh, because we are. Um, uh, yeah, not a standard e-commerce company with all the same products. Uh, so it was quite complex. So how, how can we uh, do complex uh, price um, um, uh, price compositions and also additional uh, investments? And how can we compose these in, in an e-commerce um, uh, environment, which was really interesting. Um, and now we're uh, the next step is that we also uh, going to look at an integration with AFAS. So that's our financial and client uh, database. So now um, that the, the people who purchase go directly into AFAS and uh, the invoice is uh, automatically made, which is an important improvement also for the back office. Um, and we also want to look, because now we, we have the, the, the good website, we want to uh, go further with um, uh, personalization, data of the people who visit the website and marketing automation. Because at the moment we don't have a really structured um, uh, yeah, marketing strategy on this. Yeah, but you need to have the fundamentals to get there. So yeah. basically you're saying we're up to the fun stuff now. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> we, did, we really had to do this, this major fundamental uh, step. Uh, and now we can, uh, we can go on with, uh, with the marketing. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so we're actually at the end of the webinar. I would like to say thank you for this. Uh, before I give the show back to you, Arnold, uh, I would like to say that uh, there's also a testimonial case study on umbraco.com of this case. If you want to see more, a little bit more detail on this, or you can just drop me a note on this with my email address listed here. So Arnold, can you close it? <laughs> yes, well, of course. Uh... First of all, thank you very much for your insights into the BS Scott website project. Uh, it was very interesting to learn about this project, not just the wins, but also the learnings. And uh, it's very nice to see and hear that Umbraco is making a positive impact at BS Scott and that it helps you to do a lot of things yourself instead of relying on your agency. Um, it's funny to hear that content migrations is always a thing that pops up in learnings <laughs> with these webinars, always. And, <laughs> It seems not to matter how often we, people say this, agency says this, or even we as Umbraco say this, always there's a learning about content migration. So uh, maybe there's something uh, to do here for everyone uh, working in the sector to, uh, to do something with content migration to make them work better. Um, we didn't get any live questions during this recording, but maybe is there somebody now who has a question, please type it in the chat. Um, let's give it a moment for if someone does want to type. Well, I guess, uh, <laughs> I guess not. Uh, yeah, it was very clear. So again, thank you very much uh, for this webinar and uh, thank the audience, the live audience for watching. And we hope you learned something. Uh, if you have any questions, you can reach out to Paul, as you can see on the screen, or me uh, at uh, arnold at umbraco.com or uh, leave a comment on this video uh, and we'll make sure your question gets answered. Uh, so thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you.